Good morning, YouTube. It is October 31st. Happy Halloween to everybody who celebrates Halloween out there. Today, we just rolled up out of bed and I'm going to be making some apple fritters from scratch. So, follow along. All right, everybody. So what you're going to want to do is start off with a bunch of apples. I used Ida apples, about four of them. I cut them up, put some um, lemon concentrate in a bowl. I have them soaking in there. They're holding their color nicely. Nothing is turning brown. Those are gonna get strained off. Then I've got some buttermilk pancake mix. I've got a few farm fresh eggs. I already cracked one and put it into a half a cup of water. Then I've got some cinnamon sugar in here. I've got a half vegetable oil and coconut oil mixture warming up right now. So follow along as we mix it all up. So grab your apples, wash them. We like to peel our apples as we chop them up and core them. It's totally up to you if you want to keep the skins on. Like I said, these are Ida apples. You can use any type of apple that you want. If you want them a little bit more tart, I would suggest Granny Smith. Macintosh apples are my absolute favorite to fresh eat, but for cooking, I tend to go for Ida's. The next thing that you're gonna need are some fresh eggs. If you don't have access to farm fresh eggs, eggs from the grocery store. Um, these we got from a friend at work. We've got some duck eggs in here and then some other varieties of regular chicken eggs. So we are gonna use three of those today, which are right here. I have already cracked one of them. These are, cracking with one hand, trying to get fancy. Um, these are already washed and I put them into a half of cup of filtered water. We have our own water filter that we made. It's essentially like a super Berkey. It's got real Berkey filters in it, and then it's got um, four gallon stainless steel containers on the top. So I also have three cups of buttermilk pancake mix. To that, I'm going to be adding two heaping spoonfuls of cinnamon sugar. And this is my Danish whisk. If you guys don't have a Danish whisk, I would definitely say check one out. So to my three eggs in half a cup of water, I'm going to put them in there and get it all mixed up. So now that it's halfway incorporated, you can see it's super thick and lumpy. I'm going to be grabbing some milk. Let's grab some milk. And I'm going to be adding milk to consistency. So now that our apples are strained off, we are going to coat them. Oh, one moment. Really? Need to go outside? That's actually something I don't regret at all is um, bell training our Great Dane. It's, it's pretty nice. So our buttermilk pancake mix has been sitting here for a couple minutes. It's kind of puffed up some. We are gonna add our apples to this mixture, but first I want to coat our apples with some arrowroot powder. And the reason that I do that is I find it holds um, the pancake mix on it fairly well and um, it also thickens it up just a little bit. My family really enjoys fresh cinnamon sugar that I grate down, so I'm also gonna be adding that to the apples that have the arrowroot powder in it, and then I'm gonna be mixing it into our buttermilk pancake butter milk pancake mix. Oh my God. Good morning, man. Good morning. Are you wanting some apple fritters? <laughs> so as you guys can see on the stove, I've already got a um, skillet with half vegetable oil and half coconut oil. I really don't like using vegetable oil, but in large batches like this, 
I tend to use it, but cut it with the coconut oil. So our apple fritters, I don't think you can really see that because we are in the dark here. Our apple fritters are well incorporated. It is nice and thick. All you do is fold them in like I showed you before. And then take my little Danish whisk out. Throw it in. And then you guys have seen me use this before. You saw me use it on my last video. This is the um, ice cream scoop that my husband restored in terms of the handle. I use this a lot for um, controlling my portions when I'm putting that in the pan. So all you're gonna see me do is scoop a little bit in. We're gonna wait until they're golden brown on one side, flip them over, and then let them rest before we put some powder sugar on them. So as you can see, these are starting to bubble. I like to keep my oil on low just so that they don't overcook. Okay. God. Yes, darling. Is it done yet? Not yet. <laughs> So I tend to let these sit and cool down just a little bit before I finish them off with a little bit of powdered sugar because if you put the powdered sugar on them while they are still warm, it's just gonna let it melt off. So let's get these next few in the pan and keep going. These are so good, you guys. You could also make these with pumpkin, you could make them with strawberry or blueberry, whatever your family's favorite is. So instead of going out to get donuts, you can just make these at home. They're so much better. Hey Matt, what are you doing? Did you take over for me? <laughs> why did why did I have to have you take over for me? Where are we going? Oh boy, here we go. Hey babe. Good. So, <laughs> one of the advantages to your husband surprising you with a tool adventure um, is you need to run upstairs and get dressed, so he has to take over apple fritter duties. How many times are you going to push that button? 
scraping them. It scrapes it out. <laughs> you don't need to scrape it out. Because the, the gravity will do it for you. <laughs> nah, it does it faster. <laughs> I'm not picking on you, but it's like you push it 50 times in a row. I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Scrape it out. <laughs> I'm not making fun of you. I just love it on you. So we're all done with this. We're frying up the last batch and we're going to go. Ow! So, Matt, uh, you can pick your nose all you want. It's your video. <laughs> what are you picking up today? Is it the one that you, um, okay. If you didn't watch our last video, I'll link it in the description below. The last tool adventure, Matt got caught bidding on more than one item. <laughs> I did it the day before, you didn't ask <laughs> So today we're going to pick up the thumb hole saw. So what's special about this particular saw and why do you want it? It's okay, so it rips down the lumber. And who makes this saw? I won't know until I look at the gallery. Oh, okay. So but usually this is probably made around 1900. Give or wow. take a few years. Nice. So Matt just so happens to have one of his this several, several. How many do you have now, Matt? I don't know, four or five. How many saws do you have in our basement? Thumb hole saws? No, not thumb hole saws. Vintage saws like that. Not just thumb hole. How many do you have in our basement, Matt? Should we take the people down there and show them how many you have, included with cobwebs and, and stickers? Oh, okay, so our friends joke and call us Greenfield Village. We've mentioned this in other videos. Um, since we like to do things vintage and um, old school and like taking it back to the original, like Greenfield Village is all about early 1800 settlement type stuff. So Matt just so happens to have one lying around just outside the kitchen. And we're gonna go drive an hour to get another one. Woo! It's different. How is it different? Because it has the wheat carving in it. Like right here. Oh. And that makes it better. It makes it less common. So basically, we're going to get an extra fancy plane. Oh, coffee down. Oh, totally spilled my coffee. All right, where are we headed? Let's go. these little tool adventures just to get us out of the city because I can't stand being in the city but we never really spend that much money we're pretty frugal and Matt likes to restore the things that he gets so he always gets them in that perfect condition how much are you spending on this saw today sir four dollars four bucks I'd say that's a pretty good deal for something that's vintage made hi Ben <laughs> wrong addresses later and talking to a bunch of uh, country folk that were super sweet to give us correct directions 
Matt's finally got what he bet on. However, it's not a rip saw. No, it's cross cut. Yeah? What does that mean? Yeah. It means it cuts across the grain instead of ripping with the grain. Nice. So it's pretty well rusted and beat up, but it's gorgeous. Well, it's not beat up. It's not? No. It looks it's a like it's a straight saw, too. Oh boy. Very usable. Wait, wait, wait. I want to get a. So this concludes our tool adventure for the weekend. Yes, it does. Or does it? Oh boy. <laughs> so apple fritters, tools, spending time together. Can't get any better than this, you guys. All right, so make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe for our little family vlog. And uh, we'll be seeing you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye.